So this video is for 3.2a, which is quadratic equations, functions, zeros, and models. So 3.2, we're going to separate into two sections. The first one, I'm going to teach you three different solving methods for quadratic equation, which is factoring, factoring and solving using substitution, and the quadratic formula. And then in 3.2b, um, we'll go over completing the square and then look at some application problems, okay? So for this one, I want to focus on factoring, substitution, and quadratic formula. And I'm actually going to go a little bit out of order. So I'm going to skip over to um, the quadratic e formula, sorry, quadratic formula, which is on page 12, okay? And I want to start here. Just because most people have seen the quadratic um, formula. And so I'm going to start with that and then we'll go back over and look at um, factoring and stuff. Okay. So the quadratic formula, this is a formula you are going to be required to know. Um, on your final exam, you will receive um, this formula on a formula sheet. But um, up until then, this is something that you do need to memorize um, for your unit exams. Okay. So um, the A's, the B's, and the C's that you see here are from the standard form of a quadratic equation, which is AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So we can just take the coefficients A, B, and C, plug them into this formula, and be able to find the solutions of, um, for the variable, okay? So let's go ahead and look at a couple examples. So first thing is we need to make sure that our equation is written in the standard form, meaning everything's on one side so that it's equal to zero. So we can clearly see what A, B, and C are, okay? So in this case, my two needs to be moved to the other side. And I can do that by subtracting. So I have five X squared plus three X minus two equals zero. And now I can see that my A is going to be 5, my B is going to be 3, and my C is going to be negative 2. Now, when we enter these into our quadratic um, formula, make sure you're only taking the number parts. You should never take variables when plugging into the quadratic formula. Okay? So the quadratic formula says we're going to do negative B, or the opposite of B. My B is 3, so the opposite of 3 would be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So again, my b is 3, so 3 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 5, times my c, which is negative 2, all over 2 times my a, which is 5. And then from here, it's just a matter of simplifying, right? So this gives me x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9. And then when I multiply these next three numbers together, notice I have two negatives. So this is going to turn out to be a positive. 4 times 5 is 20, times 2 is 40, all over 10. And then I keep simplifying. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 10. And then the square root of 49 is just 7, right? So we're getting x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 7 over 10. And I should be able to work this out and get two um, solutions, right, because of the plus or minus. So negative 3 plus 7 over 10 and negative 3 minus 7 over 10. If I do negative 3 plus 7, I end up with 4 tenths, which reduces to 2 fifths, right? And if I do negative 3 minus 7, I get negative 10 over 10, which reduces to negative 1. Okay, so those are my two solutions. Let's look at another one. Same idea on this one. It's already written in standard form for me. So I can already identify that my A is going to be a 1, right? Because when there's not a number there, it's an implied 1. My B is going to be 2, and my C is going to be negative 5. So now all I have to do is plug those numbers into my quadratic uh, formula, which says that x is equal to the opposite of b. So my b is 2, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 2 squared, minus 4 times my a, which is 1, times my c, which is negative 5, all over 2 times my a, which is 1, okay? And then I just simplify. 
So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus, under my square root, 2 squared is 4. Then when I multiply the next three numbers together, again I see two negatives, so I know it's going to turn out positive. 4 times 1 is 4, times 5 is going to give me 20, all over 2. So I keep going, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 24 over 2. Now unlike the last one, um, the square root of 24 is not a perfect square, right? So it's not a perfect square, I need to see if I can simplify this um, so that I can reduce the radical. 24 is the same thing as 2 times 12, right? 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So I do have two copies of a number, meaning I have a perfect square that I can bring out. So I'm going to bring out that 2, but I don't have any more perfect copies. So this 2 and this 3 get stuck under the radical. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I still have my negative 2 plus or minus the 2 that I'm bringing out. And then under the radical, I have a 2 and a 3 left over, and 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm left with a 6 underneath there, all over 2. And then I want to go ahead and reduce. Now when I reduce, I can only reduce if all three terms can be reduced. So don't just reduce 2's here, or don't just reduce here. You can only reduce if you reduce all three areas, okay? So if you want to, you can think about factoring out what you're going to reduce. Or in other words, I could say, I'm going to take a 2 out, because that's what everything has in common. If I factor out a 2, that leaves me with a negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 6. And then I can factor, sorry, I can reduce that factored out 2 with the 2 that's in the denominator. So this means that x is equal to negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 6. Now on an exam, I'm totally fine with you writing it la uh, like that, but my math lab, I don't think they have the plus or minus um, symbol. So if they say enter your answers in a box separated by um, a comma, you would need to write negative 1 minus the square root of 6 and negative 1 plus the square root of 6. Okay, it shouldn't matter which order you put these in as long as, um, you know, you have one that represents the plus and one that represents the minus. Okay, all right, so there are two for y'all to try on the next page, so go ahead and pause it um, and see how you do, and we'll go over it. All right, so on the first one, you needed to move the 10x to the other side so that everything's on one side in standard form. Then we can see that our a is 3, our b is negative 10, and our c is 6. So all we have to do is plug in those numbers. Underneath the radical, you should have gotten 28, okay? 28, we can break down to where we can bring a 2 out. And then once we bring that 2 out, all of our terms are reducible by 2. So whether you just go from this step to this step, knowing that you have to reduce all three places, or whether you factor out the 2 on top so that you can reduce it with a 6. Either way is fine with me, okay? But always make sure to see if you can reduce, okay? On the second one, second one was a little bit shorter. Um, we already have it in standard form, so I identify um, A is 1, B is negative 5, and C is 1, and then we just plug them into our formula, and the number we get under the radical is not one that reduces, right? 21 is just 7 times 3. We don't have two copies of anything, so we can't reduce the radical, and there's nothing to um, simplify, right? Because um, not all three terms have something in common, so we just leave it like that, okay? All right, so that is... Um, the quadratic formula. So from here on out, that'll be a good tool for us to have. What we want to look at now is we want to look at um, factoring. And we have two different methods, right? That was a quadratic formula. <laughs> Check. Now we want to go over factoring and then also factoring using substitution. Okay. So when we solve by factoring, the way that we do that is by the principle of zero products, which says that if we have two numbers multiplied together and it equals zero, one of them has to be zero, right? And whether these are just numbers or these are quantities or whatever, if it's equal to zero, we know one of them has to be zero. So that's what we use when we're solving by factoring. So we want to get it completely factored to where we have things being multiplied together that are equal to zero and that means we can set each one equal to zero to solve, OK? 
Okay, so very important you have everything on one side so that it's equal to zero. And then from here, we're just going to kind of ignore that for a second and factor this like we normally would. This one is a three term polynomial, so we're going to use some product. Our sum is our middle coefficient, which is a one. Our product is our first coefficient times our last coefficient. So three times negative two gives me a negative six. And what can I multiply to get a negative six that I can combine to get a negative one is actually the two numbers that I used, right? A positive three and a negative two. And there is no shortcut on this one. Okay. Remember, we can only use the shortcut when our leading coefficient is a 1, and here it's a 3. So I'm going to take my pair from the chart and replace the middle term with them. So that gives me 3x squared, and then instead of writing this x, I'm just going to label these with an x. So plus 3x minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. And then I can go ahead and do grouping. So out of the first pairing, I can pull out a 3x. And when I say pull it out, remember we're dividing it off. So when I divide 3x squared by 3x, I'm left with an x. When I divide 3x by 3x, I'm left with a positive 1. And then over here, what I can take out that these two terms have in common is a negative 2. So when I take out a negative 2 by dividing it off, I'm left with a positive x. And the same thing here, negative 2 divided by negative 2 leaves me with a positive 1. And now they have those quantities in common. So they both have an x plus 1. So when I take off the x plus 1, I'll be left with a 3x minus 2. Okay. Now normally that's where we stopped when we were factoring, but now we're solving. Okay. So if you see this word solve, don't stop <laughs> once you've got it factored. Now that we have it factored, we have two things multiplied together that equal 0. That means one of these things has to be 0. So we just set each one equal to 0. x plus 1 equals 0, or 3x minus 2 equals 0, and we solve each equation. Okay. So here we move our 1 over by subtracting, so x equals negative 1. On the second one, we move our 2 over by adding, so 3x equals 2, and then we divide off our 3. So that tells us that x is equal to 2 thirds. So those are the two solutions I get from factoring. All right, let's look at another one. This one is also one we can try and solve by factoring. Everything's on one side, so it's equal to zero. And then this one doesn't have three terms, so I can't do some product. It only has two terms, so I'm looking for a difference of squares or a sum or difference of cubes. And notice this first one kind of looks like a square, but it's not a difference. So I'm still gonna start by looking for a greatest common factor, which in this case is four. I right, have a greatest common factor. When I factor out the 4, I'll have x squared plus 3. And now we can really see this is not going to be cubes, right? Because that's a squared. It's not going to be a difference of squares because 1, it's not a difference. And 2, we don't have a square here. We have a 3. But we're still going to go ahead and solve it the same way we did this one. We set each factor equal to 0. Now, this factor doesn't have an x. So it it's, doesn't really make sense to say 4 equals 0 or x squared plus 3 equals 0, right? We know that 4 does not equal 0. So if you just have a number greatest common factor that doesn't have an x on it, don't worry about setting it equal to 0, okay? Now on this one, I can't solve it by factoring, but I can solve it using the principle of square roots. So remember, the principle of square roots says that if I have x squared is equal to a number, I can get rid of that squared by doing the square root, as long as I remember the plus or minus symbol, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate my x squared by subtracting my three to the other side. So I have x squared is equal to negative three. And now that I'm at this step, I can get rid of that square by square rooting. But if I do that, I have to remember plus or minus and the square root on the other side, okay? So my square and my square root cancel and on this side, I have plus or minus. Notice I have a negative. Anytime I have a negative, remember we gotta bring that out as an i. So I have an i square root of three, okay? And then the square root of three doesn't simplify anymore, so we would stop here. In my math lab, you might have to enter these separately, so if it gives you a box, you would put in negative i square root of three, 
and then positive i square root of 3. And actually, I think I talked about this in the, in the complex number video, I think they might have you put the i's at the end. So you may have to enter this as negative square root of 3 i and positive square root of 3 i. Just make sure your little cursor when you're typing all this stuff in is out from under the radical before you type that i in. Okay. All right. So let's look at another one. Oh, nope. Wait. Yeah, let's look at another one. Looked at the wrong page. Hee <laughs> hee. All right, so this is another one that we can solve by factoring. First step, greatest common factor. If I look at this, they don't have any numbers in common and they don't all have variables. So I can't do anything there. So the next thing I want to try is factoring. We have four terms, so our factoring method is grouping. So I'm going to go ahead and just start grouping these together and see if they have a greatest common factor within my grouping. So in the first pairing, I can take out an x squared and I'll be left with 3x plus 1. Remember when we take it out, we're dividing it off. And then out of the second pairing, we can take out a negative 4. When I divide off a negative 4, that's going to leave me with a positive 3x and a positive 1. Right? And now they have this 3x plus 1 quantity in common. I'm going to focus this. That looked kind of not focused. that a little bit better? I think that's better. All right, so now that they both have this 3x plus 1 quantity, we're going to go ahead and take it out. And notice I'll be left with x squared minus 4. And I'm actually not fully factored here, right? This one is because it's an x to the first power, but this one I still have an x squared. And if you notice, this is a perfect square, and that is a perfect square, and they're being subtracted. So this is actually a difference of squares. And remember, a difference of squares factors into the first base plus or minus the second base and two separate quantities. So the base that's being squared here is an x, and the base that's being squared here to get 4 would be a 2. So that means I can factor this down into x plus 2 and x minus 2, right? And then don't forget to put your other quantity back on here, 3x plus 1. Now that I have it completely factored, I should be able to set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So that means that 3x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. And I solve each little equation. So on this one, I'm going to move my 1 over by subtracting. So I get 3x equals negative 1. And then I divide my 3 off. So I get x equals negative 1 third. On the next one, all I have to do is subtract my 2. So I get x equals negative 2. And on the last one, I just have to move my 2 by adding. So I end up with x equals 2. Okay? All right. So now that we've kind of been refreshed on um, factor um, solving by factoring, which we've seen before, right? I want to show you how to solve using substitution, which still involves factoring, but basically what we want to do is we want to be able to make this look like something that we're used to factoring. So what we are used to factoring are things that look like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, right? We're used to doing the sum product chart with um, quadratic equations that look like this, right? We have an x squared, and then our next term is half the x power, right? It's an x to the first, and then we have a constant term. And we don't have big, ugly quantities like this. So my goal is to go from looking like this to looking something like this so that I can do a nice sum product chart. And notice the only thing that stops this from looking like that is instead of having nice pretty x's, right, instead of having an x and an x squared, we have a 3x plus 2 and a 3x plus 2 squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little substitution. I'm going to pick a different letter, like m, okay, and we're going to let m equal 3x plus 2 so that I can replace these ugly quantities with a nice pretty m, okay? So this is going to give me m squared plus 7m minus 8 equals 0. 
and now that's something we're used to seeing, right? That looks more like what we're used to when we do some product, okay? So we can go ahead and do our sum product chart now. So we need something that sums to seven that has a product of negative eight. So something that combines to seven that multiplies to negative eight would be positive eight and negative one. And because our leading coefficient is a one, we can go ahead and do the shortcut, which means that the numbers in our chart are gonna be the numbers in our factored quantities. So this factors into m plus eight times m minus one. Don't forget that it's equal to zero. And then we're gonna go ahead and solve. So this means that m plus eight equals zero or m minus one equals zero. So if I move these over, right, I'm gonna end up with m equals negative eight if I subtract that across and m equals positive one. But these are not my solutions, right? Because these are the answers I got for m. And I'm not solving for m, I'm solving for x. That's what I originally had, right? So now that I know what m equals, I need to plug back in what m was originally, okay? So m was 3x plus two. So that means that 3x plus two equals negative eight or 3x plus two equals one. Does that make sense? So we only substituted the m in so that we could easily factor it and get an answer. And now that we have those answers, we have to put back in what we originally took out, which was this 3x plus two quantity. And now we can go ahead and finish solving this to figure out what x actually is. So here I would have to subtract two from both sides. So I get 3x equals negative 10 and then divide off my three. So I get x equals negative 10 thirds as one of my solutions. And on the second one, I'm gonna subtract two from both sides. So I get 3x equals negative one, and then I divide off my negative one. So x equals, oh, not my negative one, I'm sorry. I divide off my three. I'm trying to solve for x here. Divide off my three so that those will cancel. So x equals negative one third as my second answer. Okay. All right. So the whole idea behind substitution is we're going to pick a letter to substitute in for something ugly, <laughs> right? Whether it be a quantity, whether it be um, variables to higher powers, something that causes this to look bad, right? We're going to substitute in a different letter so that we get to work with something we're used to working with. But then we just have to remember once we solve it, right? then we have to plug back in whatever we originally took out, okay? Let's look at another one. Let's look at this one. Same idea, still have quantities. We wanna get rid of those quantities so that we just have a regular number squared plus a regular number equals 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and substitute something in for this. Let's call it I don't know, let's pick another letter that doesn't look like a number. How about Y? We'll use a Y. Why not, <laughs> right? So let's let Y equal M squared minus 5M. So if I put Y in for this quantity, now I have Y squared plus Y is equal to 12. And that's way less offensive than the original thing, right? All right, so if I wanna factor this using my sum product though, I need it to be equal to zero. So I need to move this 12 to the other side by subtracting. So that's gonna give me a y squared plus y minus 12 equals zero. And now this is something I can go ahead and solve using my sum product chart, right? My sum here would be a one and my product would be a negative 12. So what can I multiply to get negative 12 that I can combine to get positive one would be a positive four and a negative three. And because my leading coefficient is a one, I can use the shortcut. So this factors into y plus four and y minus three. And that's equal to zero, so now I just need to solve each of these little factors. So y plus four equals zero, or y minus three equals zero, and all I have to do is move the constant term across, which is gonna give me y equals negative four, or in this case, when I move it across, 
it gives me y equals positive 3. Okay. Now remember, we're not done, right? We're not done. Now that we know what our two solutions are, we have to put back in what y was originally. y was m squared minus 5m. So this means that m squared minus 5m equals my negative 4, right? Or m squared minus 5m is equal to 3. And now I can go ahead and finish solving this out to find what my original variable equals. Okay. Now, this is going to be a little bit more work than the last one because we still have a squared, which means in order to solve this equation and also this one, right, if I have a squared, I need to do the sum product chart. And before I can do the sum product chart, I need to move my constant term back over um, to the correct side. So this gives me m squared minus 5m plus 4 equals 0. And then when I look for the sum product chart, my sum would have to be negative 5. My product would be a positive 4. So what can I multiply to get 4 that I can combine to get a negative 5 would have to be negative 4 and negative 1. So this is going to factor, because I can use the shortcut here, right, leading coefficient is a 1, shortcut, <laughs> then this will factor into m minus 4 and m minus 1. And then all I have to do is set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So m minus 4 equals 0 or m minus 1 equals 0, which gives me m equals a positive 4 or m equals a positive 1. So while those are two of my answers, I still have another case to solve, right? So again, just like the last one, I'm going to go ahead and move my 3 to the other side. So I have m squared minus 5m, oh, whoops, minus, there's my white out, white out, minus 3 is equal to 0. And then I want to do just like I did over here, I want to try the sum product chart, right? But notice on this one, if I try the sum product chart, I get a sum of negative 5 and a product of negative 3. And it's not possible to find factors of 3 that will combine to give me a 5. So it's not factorable. And if it's not factorable, my only other choice is to use the quadratic formula. Use quad formula. Okay, so I know we just learned that a minute ago, but I'm going to go ahead and write it up here so that we can reference it. The quadratic formula, remember, was negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have to use on this one. So we got our first two answers from the first solution we got for m. Now we should get two answers from this solution we get for m. We just have to use a quadratic formula to find them. So quadratic formula says that m is equal to the opposite of b. So here my b is negative 5. So the opposite would be a positive 5. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So my b is negative 5. So negative 5 squared minus 4 times my a, which is 1, times my c, which is negative 3, all over 2 times my a, which is 1. Sorry, I'm having to squish it in here a little bit. Okay, and then we just need to simplify. So m is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 25, and then when I multiply these three numbers together, I see two negatives, so it's going to end up being a positive 12 all over 2. So I get m is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 37 all over 2. 37 is a prime number, so it's not going to factor down to where we can reduce this radical. So this is as far as we go. In my math lab, you'll have to enter this as two separate answers, right? 5 plus the square root of 37 over 2 and 5 minus the square root of 37 over 2. Um, but on exams or worksheets, I'm fine with you leaving it like this. Okay. So again, in a nutshell, substitution is picking um, a new letter to substitute out something horrible <laughs> so that we can easily solve 
And then once we solve, we just have to put back in what we originally took out and then solve, okay? Let's look at one more type that uses substitution. All right, so remember when we're factoring, we want something like this, something squared plus a term that has the variable to the first power, or sorry, more, more like this. We want the variable squared, we want the second term to have a variable to the first power, we want our constant term because then we can do some product. And notice, this one has a couple of issues. The first one being that it's equal to nine. We need it to be equal to zero. So we're gonna start by moving that nine back over. So I have x to the fourth minus eight x squared, and we move that nine over, it's gonna be a minus nine. Now we do have three terms, so it does kind of look like something I could do some product with, but some product is, um, is for quadratic equations, right? Meaning the highest power of x to be a two. Now this almost looks like what we need, right? Because up here we had a y squared and then a y. Here we have to the fourth and squared. So I would really like this middle term right here. I would really like that not to be a squared term. I would really like it to be a, to the first term, right? My variable. So I'm gonna substitute in for x squared, okay? Let's say, let's let, um, let's use a p, why not? Let's let p equal x squared, okay? So that means this middle term would be negative eight p minus nine equals zero. I just have to figure out what this first term would be. So let's, let's forget about the p for just a second. When this was x squared, this one was x to the fourth, meaning whatever its exponent is right here, this one was double that exponent. So if this is x squared, this one's x to the fourth. So let's apply that same thing of this exponent, um, I'm sorry, this exponent being double this one's exponent. So if the, now the middle exponent is to the first power, then if I double that exponent, it would be to the second power, right? So if I substitute p in for x squared, that means x to the fourth would be p squared, okay? And now this is something I can use some product for. So let's go ahead and do our sum product chart. My sum is negative eight. My product would be negative nine. So something I can multiply to get negative nine that I can combine to get negative eight would be negative nine and one. And my leading coefficient is a one, which means that I can use my shortcut for using uh, the p variable here. So this means I have p minus nine and p plus one equals zero. And then I just set each of these equal to zero so I can solve. So p minus nine equals zero or p plus one equals zero. When I solve, I move my nine over, which gives me p is equal to nine. And here I move my, neg or my one over by subtracting, which gives me p is equal to negative one, okay? So now we have solved for p, but our original had x's, right? So now we need to go ahead and plug back in for what p was. So remember, p originally was x squared. So this means that x squared is equal to nine, right? Or x squared is equal to negative one, okay? So now that I've put back in what p is, okay? I'm just gonna put a note down here. Sub back in what p is, okay? So that's what we've done. P was x squared, so that means x squared equals nine or x squared equals negative one. And now I can, I can solve both of these by using the square root property, right? If I take the square root of x squared, I can do that as long as I use plus or minus the square root on the other side. So that means x is equal to plus or minus three. And on this one, if I take the square root of x squared, I have to remember plus or minus on the other side. So that tells me that x is equal to, and here, remember the square root of negative one, that's just i. So I get plus or minus i. So in my math lab, when I enter all my answers into the box, right, I would do uh, negative three, positive three, negative i, positive i, okay?
kind of makes sense. Maybe not the worst thing you've ever been exposed to in your life. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. So on the next page, there are two for you to try using this new substitution um, idea method here. So go ahead and try number one and two. And if you get stuck or if you finish and you want to check yourself, unpause the video and we'll go over it. Okay. Okay. Let's give number one a look. This one was very similar to the last practice problem I did, right? We need to replace this x squared because we always want that variable in the middle to be to the first power. Because if we can ensure the one in the middle is the first power, then hopefully the first one will be a squared, right? So I'm just going to replace that x squared with a letter. I chose M. You can choose whatever letter you want. So we should have our new letter squared plus three times our new letter minus 10 equals zero. And then we can factor it. It factors into m plus five and n minus two. And when I solve those, I get negative five and positive two. So once I get my answers for m, then I need to plug back in what m was originally. So this means x squared equals negative five or x squared equals two. And then I just solve each of those. Okay, don't forget to pull your eye out when you have a negative under the radical. Let's look at the second one. Second one, we also have to substitute, right? But this time it's for a quantity. So we're going to take out this quantity with, and I'm using an M again. You can use whatever letter you want. So that leaves us with M squared minus 5M plus 6 equals 0. And now this is something we can um, solve by factoring. Right? They multiply to 6, which is negative, uh, multiply to 6, combined to negative 5 would be negative 3 and 2. So we can use the shortcut. And then when I solve each of these factors, I'm going to get a positive 3 and a positive 2. And then don't forget to sub back in what m was, because originally we're solving for x. So once we put in our quantity 2x minus 3 and set it equal to the two answers we got for m, um, we should end up with x equals 3 or x equals 5 halves, okay? All right, so that is the end of 3.2a. You should now be able to complete that assignment in uh, my math lab, and if you have any questions, please let me know.